I have here a computer disc. Could have just about anything on it. Music, movies, photographs. Could be part of an encyclopedia. It's a modern marvel, but whatever it is, it is not, well, it's not a photo album, and it's not a book. Our stories tonight are about the old handcrafted things and the people who make them. They live in a modern world, but they've sort of appointed themselves keepers of the old ways. I'm throwing down a, a yellow right now, which is going to be a vein color in the pattern I'm making. What Curtis Finley is doing in his basement in Pacific is something that hardly anybody knows how to do anymore. He is a paper marbler, and it took him many years to learn this old craft, and as you'll see, to make it look so deceptively easy. What he's making is the decorative sheets of paper that are found on the inside and sometimes the outside of old book covers. Now there's no listing for paper marblers in the yellow pages. Now here it comes. But you can bet that those people who restore and preserve old books have his name and number on file. We found out about him from John Hoover, the director of the Mercantile Library at the University of Missouri-St. Louis campus. This place has so many great old books that they put together a whole paper marbling exhibit. When did you first become aware of marbling? I oh, guess when you become aware of books. Beca when I became a, a, a librarian and before, uh -huh. there was, it was always some mis mystery about the insides of the papers, and the, the, the whole book is a structure to me. So, so what brought about the idea of th then doing a whole, whole a museum exhibit yeah. based on the insides, for the most part, of books? We wanted to use our collections here at the university as teaching collections for students in, in, muse in museums. And, and the Mercantile, I think a lot of people might like to call it a museum of the book in general. And we thought, well, this will be a, a good chance to let students have hands-on experience to look at these books from our vaults, put them together, open them up, and, and let the, the peacocks come alive with them. And in fact, peacock is the name of one of the many marbling patterns that were developed in different parts of the world in different eras. Others are called snail, tiger's eye, and there are Dutch and French and German and Spanish styles. And that's what makes what Curtis Finley does pretty impressive. So, you know, I think a lot of people, when they see this stuff, assume it's sort of a random mm -hmm. uh, a <laughs> movement, or, but, but it's not. I mean, there's real styles here. I mean, you can... Oh, every one of these things has a name. Uh -huh. And you mentioned random. People say, golly, no two are alike, right? Right. Yeah. Well, can you give me ten of these that are just the same? <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem of marbler, taking yeah. this random effort and getting something that gives you the same impression, sheet right. by sheet. Right. So this now is here's a, how this he does it. A, right. He has a shallow pan filled with a thick but not sticky Probably. liquid. <laughs> well, I, I've got a little bit of color on here from the last sheet I did, and I'm going to clean this surface off. I'm going to skim it twice. If you don't have a real fresh surface, uh, the colors don't expand properly. So this is one of the irritating parts of the job. Then he applies the colors he wants to use, sometimes sprinkling, sometimes putting on bigger drops. The different colors don't mix, and they don't get layered. New colors push the old colors aside. Now what are we going to do here? I'm going to rake it. That's when people say, ooh. Right. And then when you go this way, it's just like fireworks. They go, ah. Wow. Okay, now, this is going to be a zebra pattern, but it's not zebra yet. But I liked it the way it was before. Oh. I mean, I like this too, but you could yeah. actually have left it. Oh, in certainly that could have. Right. Could have picked it right up like that. And I'll lay it down flat. Another thing that's hard to do when you're learning to put it down is not to tremble when you lay the sheet. That's what the English would call zebra. All the colors he put down are now on the paper, and to make another, he starts all yeah. over again. He can use his comb to make swirls. For a Spanish-style paper, he draws a piece of straw diagonally through the colors then with a very practiced hand moves the paper back and forth just a little to create a wave effect that will add another sense of movement and light across the paper this 
is pretty tricky. You know the instructions for Spanish paper read, with a special movement, move the paper to and fro. Nobody knew what to and fro meant. Or special. <laughs> <laughs> well, what they do, they jerk the paper up and down, and people right. were just getting horrible, right. horrible Spanish papers. So one day I thought, what does to and fro mean? So I looked it up in the dictionary. Right. It means back and forth. So then you start moving mm -hmm. one corner back and forth. You get great Spanish paper then. Right. But that's a pretty he saw his first marbling demonstration while working yes, at the St. Louis Public Library downtown. Then he studied the old manuals. But this was never really supposed to be learned from a how-to book. There used to be big paper marbling shops in Europe. There's a depiction of one at the Mercantile Library exhibit. This is where the skills were passed on from master to apprentice. Th this is a scene from Diderot's encyclopedia that showed all the trades. It, it shows you a lot, but it doesn't really show you the movements. And how well, even if you learn all of these different styles and you understand the process, oh. you must still run across one once in a while, and you're thinking, right. mm -hmm. how the heck did he do that? Yeah, yeah, I'm, absolutely. Some of the patterns that are as rare as can be were, were known universally as a trade secret. This is one big whisk. There are today in the United States maybe a thousand people who can do this. And it's not like taking up painting or photography. There are no marbling supply stores. So Finley makes a lot of his own colors. He even buys broom corn to make his own whisks. He's also made some improvements to the process that libraries are quite happy about. He's developed a way to do marbling on acid-free paper. I hope this works, because... There has been a lot of trial and error in this basement. There are so many things to consider, so many things that might not work out quite right. Uh, you know what the problem is? It is realizing that there are a million little things that can cause trouble and recognizing them when they do. And it looks easy, <laughs> yeah. and I know it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> your, your nerves are shattered at the end of the day. I don't see how people in the bad old days did it all day long. Thank you.